If you're planning an Alaskan cruise, watch this first to decide which ports of call to visit and what Alaska cruise shore excursions to expect at each destination. We've been on three different Alaskan cruises with three separate companies and have packed each trip full of Alaska shore excursions. These are the tours that we recommend and what you can expect on each one. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing. And be sure to check the tours in the description below because we've listed the shore excursions with links and prices. First up is Ketchikan, the salmon capital of the world. Known as Alaska's first city, Ketchikan got its name because it is the first port of call as you cruise north along the Inside Passage. There are plenty of things to do in Ketchikan, and we're going to highlight a few of its top attractions. Alright, let's go shopping on Creek Street. Creek Street runs along the Ketchikan Creek, and there are plenty of shops, restaurants, and historical buildings to explore. The boardwalk was once the city's red light district, but today it's made for tourists to enjoy its colorful buildings and beautiful views of the creek. But the number one excursion we suggest is to watch bears feed on salmon in their natural habitat. It's one of the best places in Alaska to see this. We are in the hide watching the bears and there are four black bears feeding right now. It's incredible. Ketchikan is known as the salmon capital of the world, attracting plenty of bears to the shores of its rivers during the spawning season. Watching from a safe distance from within our hides, we witnessed a half a dozen bears come and go during our 90 minutes on the island. We're taking a float plane out and are we ever lucky? It's a beautiful day, clear skies. So it's a go. Can't wait to see what we see. Another popular shore excursion in Ketchikan is taking a scenic flight in a float plane over the Tongass National Forest and Misty Fjords National Monument. This national monument has vertical slopes reaching 3,000 feet out of the ocean and is covered with rainforest. It's truly one of the beautiful coastal scenic flights in Alaska. Let me tell you, the Zodiac Tour is one of the most fun things you'll do in Ketchikan. This is a great way to see the top attractions in Ketchikan, but the real thrill is being able to drive your own Zodiac in the Alaskan waters. On the lookout for the humpback whale. Ketchikan has the world's largest collection of standing totem poles and a great way to learn about them is to visit the Totem Heritage Center, which houses an extensive collection of totem poles from all of the Alaskan cultures. Also, make your way to the Saxon Native Village to see more totem poles and an authentic clan house. Next up is Juneau, Alaska's capital. When visiting Juneau, one of the best things you can do is go whale watching. You are guaranteed sightings. And we are heading out on a small whale watching adventure, a photography tour, and then we're going to go to the other star attraction in Juneau, which is Mendenhall Glacier. Juneau is one of the premier places for whale watching, and it's one of the most popular excursions on an Alaskan cruise. It was then on to our guided hiking tour through the Tongass National Forest where we saw salmon spawning and learned about the flora and fauna of the area before hiking to the star attraction, the Mendenhall Glacier. This is one of the most accessible glaciers in Alaska and it is not to be missed. 
There are several excursions to Mendenhall Glacier, from paddling in a canoe to hiking directly to Nugget Falls from the Visitor Center. You can get right beside the glacier, and there are specific tours that you can book to see the Mendenhall Ice Caves. But remember, the Mendenhall Glacier is retreating quickly, so ice cave sightings are not guaranteed. Make sure you take a stroll on the boardwalk and check out all the little shops and restaurants around there. They've laid it out really nice. Even if you don't do an excursion, Juno is worth visiting to see its old Wild West facades, take a ride on the Mount Roberts Tramway, or check out its museums and restaurants. Our next stop was Skagway which is the gateway to the Yukon and heart of the Klondike Gold Rush. Downtown Skagway is a national historic park dedicated to the Klondike Gold Rush. There are more than 100 historic buildings and structures featuring exhibits, films, and interactive displays that explore the history and culture of the region. You can have a drink at a saloon, pop into an old brothel, and even catch a show. Come to the Days of 98 show. Just outside of town is the Klondike Gold Rush Cemetery, where the likes of writer Jack London and notorious outlaw Soapy Sales are laid to rest. Trolley tours and city tours will take you to the Skagway's top attractions. Skagway is also the gateway to the Chilkoot Trail, and you can book hikes to take a portion of this historic route used by prospectors in the 1800s. One of the most popular attractions of this gold rush town is the White Pass Railway. All aboard the White Pass Railway! This historic narrow gauge railway was built in 1897 and takes you up to the summit of White Pass in the Canada's Yukon Territories. It is considered one of the great train rides in the world. The railway is one of the most popular and one of the most reasonable tours in Skagway, but if you want to take things up a notch, book a helicopter tour to see the surrounding glaciers. These mammoth glaciers are located high in the mountains and can really only be appreciated from the sky. Aerial tours are always pricier than other excursions, but it's well worth it. And some include hiking on the glacier or hiking in the Tongass National Forest. Next up is Anchorage, the largest city in Alaska, and it is often the jumping off point for many cruises leaving from Whittier. There's great dining and hotel options here, and there are plenty of excursions to be had. You can book tours that will take you out to the Turnagain Arm, or you can book some boat tours to explore the fjords and glaciers and the wildlife of the area. When in Anchorage, you may want to book your dog sledding adventure with an actual Iditarod racer or spot wildlife at Chugach National Forest and the Alaskan Wildlife Conservation Center. From here, you can also hop on the Alaska Railway. The Alaska Railroad isn't just about getting from point A to point B. It's about savoring the journey itself. Originally built to access the territory's vast resources, today it takes travelers on an unforgettable journey through some of Alaska's most stunning landscapes. The moment you board this train, you're treated in comfort and style, with domed windows for panoramic viewing and dining cars. This is awesome! You can come to the back of the train for a viewing platform and get some fresh air. The Alaska Railroad connects key Alaskan destinations, including Anchorage, Denali National Park, and Fairbanks. Vancouver, Canada is our final port of call on our Alaskan cruise. This beautiful city on the west coast is worth spending at least a night or two after your cruise to Alaska. Make sure to take a city tour and check out a couple of its top attractions. 
When you come to Vancouver, you have to make sure you come over to Stanley Park and go for a walk along the seawall. You can rent a bike and it's a great way to just get some fresh air and people watch and see the skyline. Stanley Park is located in the heart of the city and is a large thousand acre park with plenty of attractions. Most city tours will stop here. There are so many things to do in Stanley Park that you could spend an entire day here. This is one of the most visited aquariums in the world and it's in the center of Stanley Park. If you can book an excursion to Grouse Mountain, we highly recommend it. It has amazing views and it's filled with adventures. We are at Grouse Mountain today in North Vancouver and we're going to go do some zip lining. So we're just going to take the gondola up and then do a zip line adventure. <laughs> All right, we're here with Mountain Zip Lines on Grouse Mountain and we are going to do some zip lining with Colin Braden. Woohoo! We did zip lining in Vancouver, but it is offered on many stops on both the land and sea portion of Alaskan cruises. Okay, we're at the top and it is a big cloud. This is gonna be cool. Grouse Mountain Zip Line is a five line double track circuit taking you over canyons and old growth forests at speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. All right, All right this is a faster one. This is the fastest Oops. one today. The fastest one today? Ah, I'm right scared! Okay, I'm not, but it's gonna be fun! A countdown, one, I knew it! Ah. Ah. <laughs> this is awesome! Whoa! <laughs> that was fun. It actually made my eyes water. It was going Whoa. so fast. Whoa. <laughs> that was awesome. There are a lot of things to do on Grouse Mountain. It's more than just hiking. There's a lumberjack show, there's the canopy walk and zip lines, there's a restaurant, and there are some grizzlies up here as well. Grouse Mountain is home to two grizzly bears that were rescued as cubs. If you missed seeing a brown bear on your cruise, this is a great way to see these adorable rescues that live on five acres of parkland. When you visit Vancouver, you have to come to Granville Island. Granville Island is an artist district filled with eateries, boutiques, artist studios, and even a brewery. It's a great place to spend the afternoon. Well, there are a lot of different ways to get around Vancouver. You've got the hop on, hop off bus, you have the shared bike programs, you have public transit and the SkyTrain, and you have these great aqua buses, little ferries that take you across from Granville Island to other parts of the city. If you're going to stick around a while, we highly recommend heading out to Whistler. As North America's largest ski resort and home to the 2010 Winter Olympics, this four season resort is an outdoor lover's dream. There are hiking trails, fun attractions, museums, and plenty of restaurants making for an excellent overnight trip before or after your cruise. There are plenty of day tours from Vancouver that offer tours to Whistler. If you wanna find out more things to do in Whistler, check the links below. Well, that's a wrap of our journey through our favorite Alaskan cruise ports and shore excursions. We hope we could help you choose the right adventure for your Alaskan cruise and let us know what you decided and how you liked it in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this journey and leave a comment to let us know your favorite Alaskan destination. Until next time, safe travels and keep exploring.